Hey everyone, welcome to another Intro to HTML video. Welcome to the first video in my Intro to HTML video series, but I just said welcome to another one. The reason is because I actually made this series of Intro to HTML videos a while back, uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, in the time since I made those videos, Notepad++, the uh, the the code editor that we use to write all of our markup, all of our HTML, has changed. Some of the functionality was taken away. One of the things that I depended upon in that video was the ability to just really quickly launch uh, your HTML from the Run menu. Well, also in the, in the first video, I, I demonstrate how to browse for a file in Windows Explorer and then launch it by just double-clicking on the icon. But um, the big thing that I depended on all the time was the Run menu, Launch in Chrome, or holding Control, Alt, Shift, and R to launch in Chrome. Well, you can't do that in Notepad++ anymore. Uh, the, the functionality was removed from the software due to some security concerns by the developers. So um, it's just not there anymore. We've got to go on without it. And they also changed some other things in the way that you save files. So I want to talk about these things just a little bit and get you prepared for the rest of the videos. You're going to have to ignore some of the things in the rest of the videos from here on out because I'm not going to remake them just for this one little, little glitch. The rest of the videos are very good. So let's get into it. What is an HTML file? An HTML file is a file that's meant to launch in a web browser. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And it's the language that um, communicates to browsers what each and every part of your, of your uh, text in here is and what function it'll provide. Okay. Now, an HTML file um, it needs to have a couple of things to make it work. First off, you need to have all of the HTML tags in there. You need to have things like a doc type, an HTML tag, a head, and body, and, and so on and so forth. You're going to learn all about that stuff in future videos. The other thing it needs is it needs the .html file extension when you save it. So when I save a file, I have to go File, Save As, and I have to make sure that it's a .html file extension. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to just store it in a, in a folder here. And I need to do two things. One, I need to choose hypertext markup language right here. Secondly, I have to put the file extension on the end of the file name. A file extension in uh, computing is one of these things right here. What they do is they indicate what kind of file this is. Now, different types of files can be used by different types of, uh, uh, of applications. They can hold different types of data, perform different types of tasks. .html is meant to be used only by web browsers. Okay, Just like a .exe is meant to launch some sort of an executable uh, uh, application. So this is a file extension. They always start with a dot and they're followed by um, a, a number of characters. Some operating systems require that they be only three characters long. Some allow you to have them four characters long or you know uh, the upper limit I'm not sure on, on other file extensions but it's usually three or four characters. HTML is four characters long. This is going to tell the computer that this is a web page. Okay? So things that you need to have. You need to make sure you choose hypertext markup language file and you append the extension right here. If you don't do those things, it's not going to save it as an HTML file. So I've got it in my new folder here. I'll save it. Okay? I'm going to make another document here so you can see the contrast. Just make a new document, paste all this stuff here, and I'll go file save as, and I'm going to just go index1, and I'll save. Now, when I look at this, it seems like it's uh, probably an HTML page. Um, a lot of the same things happen. You notice when I saved this as an HTML page, I got all this syntax highlighting. In other words, all of the tags turn to different colors from the regular text. Well, that's happening here as well. 
Um, so everything seems like it's it's an HTML page or a web page. But when I go over to my file system and browse for the file, now here's how you'll do this. In, in Windows 10, you'll go to your file browser in Documents, and you'll browse where you saved it. I saved it in Desktop. Who knows where you saved it? I'm going to go to New Folder because that's where it went. And I've got two things. I've got Index and Index 1. You'll see Index has a Chrome icon next to it. Now, yours might not have a Chrome icon next to it. It might have an Explorer icon next to it or a Firefox icon next to it or, uh, or, or whatever you have as your default browser. Um, but mine says Chrome because it's default. That's my default browser. This does not. It's just got a little piece of paper next to it. That means it's just a type file. There is no um, extension appended to it. Okay, so it wasn't an HTML. You remember when I saved my HTML, I had to go .html and I had to choose the file type of hypertext markup language. Given that I did not do that with this one, it's just a quote-unquote file. If I double-click on this file, it's going to bring up the option to open it in some application. I'm just going to open it up in Microsoft Edge and click OK. And you can see that it's just showing my markup. That's a problem. It's not showing my web page as it should. I'm going to go back over to this new folder again. And I'm going to double click on the one that says index and it's got the, uh, it says Chrome hypertext uh, HTML document. And it's going to open it up in Chrome as a web page. And that's what we want to happen. So even though this looks like it's a web page here because it's got all the syntax highlighting, it's not. In order to make this work, we have to go file, save as, and you have to choose hypertext markup language, and you have to append the extension to it, and make sure you do it correctly, and then save. Now when you do that, you're going to see now I've got a copy of this that's called index1, and it's a Google Chrome file, or it's an HTML file with a Google Chrome uh, thumbnail next to it, or icon next to it. So I double click on this, and now it opens up in a browser just like it should. Okay? All right, so review. When you make a file, I'm gonna do this, I want everybody to do this, uh, well, just watch. I'll copy, I'm gonna make a new file, I'm gonna paste it in. When I save, I need to go file, save as, I need to choose hypertext markup language, and I need to put the .html on the end. If I don't do this, it's not going to be a web page, and I'm going to have problems. Well, there you have it. That's how we're going to be dealing with Notepad++ from here on out. Ignore the parts in the other videos where I talk about the run menu and launching in Chrome or launching in Firefox because that functionality doesn't exist. Thanks for watching.